Sexy and I know it. Yes. Yes. Hey. I won. All right. Oh. <laughs> this recording. Hi. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry. Uh, I got a little distracted there. Um, I wanted to, uh, well, first of all, welcome to the new screencast. Um, today we're going to uh, cover a little bit about uh, curved mirrors. We've been talking a lot, a lot uh, recently about the uh, law of reflection and how light rays uh, bounce evenly uh, off of a plane surface. But what happens when you when you curve the mirror and do they still follow the law of reflection? So once again, just quickly, law of reflection states that the angle of reflection equals the angle of incidence. Okay, give an example where this is true. Uh, anytime you're using a rear view mirror. Anytime you're looking at yourself in the mirror, anytime you're using a telescope or a binoculars, they all follow the law of reflection. Incoming light reflects the same angle uh, as it is and it does going out. Here is a diagram, reflected ray and the incident ray, creating their angle of reflection and angle of incidence and how those angles should be the same. But when you look at, like, a, let's say a spoon, the surface of the spoon, it tends to throw you off a bit because when you think of the law of reflection, you think of uh, a plane mirror, the immediate response might be, well, if you curve the mirror, it's not going to reflect the same. Uh, you're not quite on the right track if you're thinking that way, but it's okay to be thinking that way because a curved mirror, uh, like I said, doesn't seem to follow the same uh, type of uh, uh, law or same, t same physics. But before we get into the physics behind it, there are two types of mirrors you need to know about. There is a concave mirror, which caves inwards, and a convex mirror. Those bulge outwards. Okay, Concave, convex. These are probably review from an earlier grade, but still, uh, we'll go through these. So let's start with concave. Uh, these types of mirrors, as I mentioned, curve inwards. And they still actually obey the law of reflection. The thing is, though, because the mirror is curved, the normals change. The normals aren't straight out anymore. They begin to curve towards the center. This causes all light being reflected to a focal point, which is caused because of the focus or because of the curve of the mirror. The focal point is a common point where all the light rays meet. Okay, focal point, focus, right? So. If we look at, if you ever watched The Amazing Race, uh, a couple seasons ago, they had to cook a hot dog or boil a, a, a thing of water, I can't remember which one it was, uh, using this mirror. And they had to build the mirror, and it was a solar cooker. And the light rays, when they came in from the sun, reflected to a very specific point. And at that point was the object they needed to heat. You can see on the diagram on the right how all the light rays coming into the mirror are straight, but then as they strike the mirror, they're all focused to a very specific point called the focal point. Okay, and that focal point is the brightest and strongest point of reflection. Some examples of uh, concave mirrors that use this principle, telescope mirrors, um, makeup mirrors or cosmetic mirrors, ladies, I'm sure you've seen these before, uh, uh, headlights or flashlights all use concave mirrors to bring light to a focal point. Now, because this focal point uh, exists, it changes the way an image is viewed. Images can appear upside down or right side up, depending on how far you are from the focal point. Okay, so looking at this picture again, if you're in front of the focal point, if you're here, where this X is, okay, that generates um, larger images. Think of cosmetic mirrors. Okay. If you are here, any point past the focal point, that generates smaller images. Okay? And it's all because of how the light is reflected. Okay? The physics behind that, uh, I don't want to get into on the screencast, but we will certainly discuss it in class and how that image is created. Okay? Convex mirrors. These ones uh, have a surface that is curved outward. And the mirrors do the opposite of concave mirrors. They don't bring the light together. They spread the light rays out. 
ignore the focal point and the principal axis. Those definitions aren't important here. What's important here is actually how the light is reflected. Again, notice all the light rays coming in at the same uh, angle, all straight. And then once they strike our convex mirror, they're reflected outwards or away from a center. And because the light rays spread out or diverge, they actually make the images appear smaller. Okay, two great examples are store mirrors and uh, side mirrors in vehicles. Okay, they both are concave, thus spreading the light out. And because the light is spread out, okay, it makes the image appear smaller and it also gives you a wider viewing angle. So images in a convex mirror appear smaller than the actual object because the light rays are spreading apart. It makes what you see appear smaller and it also allows you to see at a greater angle. Okay, So two types of mirrors, concave mirrors, convex mirrors, each producing a different type of image. Okay, You have uh, with the crayons a concave uh, mirror on the left close to the focal point making it appear larger and a convex mirror on the right side making it appear slightly smaller. Uh, think of the front side and the back side of a spoon, right? The inside bowl part, you look really big. The outside part, you look kind of small. Both are examples of how concave and convex mirrors reflect the light differently. Okay? We will cover a little bit more in class about uh, the images formed and where the light rays are, but there's your uh, brief and quick introduction on uh, the types of curved mirrors. Okay, now if you don't mind, back to my game. Woo! I won that one. Yes!